makes this one a hit. It won't hurt. Tennis and two red alert. I'm a, I'm a rain. We're over here for New York and New York in York part two. And first thing we're going to talk about is, um, is, um, people in, like, people changing. There's this rider, one of my favorites, Chris Day. He's from somewhere in California, I'm not sure where. Chris Day is known, there's Joanne. Th this is, um, Chris Day is known as, um, pretty much like a real quick rider, you know, all fast and speed metal type of dude. And, um, this last contest in, where was it? Where was that last contest, Gary? Texas, Texas, where we have exclusive footage of Chris Day and Dennis McCoy. And it's really weird because he, Dennis is, um, Dennis is just doing like a usual rap, and all of a sudden Chris Day came up, and we're not quite sure what he was trying to do. So, um, we'll show you the video here, and you try and figure out what he's done. your mind is conditioned for. And I'll put it in the first person. I can only get that which is welcome back to the next level of fact. The following pro. The following program is presented by Large Ray's Slow Roast Coffee Sticker Company. Large Ray's Slow Roast Coffee. It's like when you're roasting a guy, but you do it real slow. Oh, hey. Welcome back to the next level of fact or freestyle. <gasps> Thank you. 
time for a company meeting. I gotta change Ricky's name to. Hey, can I change your name to Davo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just call me Gumby for short. I think that might be more appropriate. Like 1985, <laughs> uh, uh, Haro suit and shit that he wore back in the day. Or whatever shit that. he wore. He'll get that to you. Hey, Dave. What's, what's up, guys? Your stunt double is here, and we're going to do the ceremony to make him you. <laughs> All right. But Ray's going to be, be quite on. The that's going to be quite the process. I've rehearsed it. I, I forgot to shave my beard and get in shape. Hey, how's your new reclamation bike, Dave? It's good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, I have to um, spend a little more time on it, but it's good. Can you hear my audio okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, Ray... And no more Todd? Yeah, Todd Todd had to quit the show because he had other um, duties that needed his attention. Is this a fake quit or is this a real quit, though? It's kind of hard to say. <laughs> Look at it's that a... fucking couch. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, I would like to introduce you to Montana Ricky. He's Dave's new stunt double. <laughs> is there really a guy named Montana Montana Ricky? Yeah. Scroll over. He's the he's the one with us. We're we're running out of people with real names. There's Stony McGee, Montana Ricky. Everyone's got like, you know, Joe Sisman is the only guy that has a real name. <laughs> I know. Dave Dave was telling me, Dave, was it you who were telling me that you worked with a naming consultant when you first got into show business? No, that wasn't me, but I, I that's the kind of thing I would do for sure. Dave's in show business? I try to be in show business. I'm not who's the it, who's the guy with the shirt off and the and the is that a real person? I'm what is that? I'm your stunt double. I'm the guy that took over for you. I'm the loudmouth in BMX. <laughs> you ain't my stunt double, are you? Yeah, I am. I rap better, I get in people's faces better, I'm better than ice money. I'm the new dude. Thank God. Thank uh, God somebody sure. wanted to do it because I wasn't uh, hey, that good at here, it. Here's how we know I'm the new dude. I'm just as narcissist as you that I got pictures of myself hanging on the wall just like you do. Oh, come <laughs> on. This is this is my private area. This is, you know, this is where uh, this is where see, I teach. I'm, this I'm is just as bad as you are. I teach people. Oh people. Whoa. I teach people about freestyle. So do I. Dude, I'm right right now, this is like a Dude, I usually have to pay two ninety nine a minute for this. This is, this is like great. Uh, this is, yeah, this is, the, this is the true battle yeah. going on here. Yeah. Dave, Dave like, put I, that blanket on. Dave, I hope oh, you're Dave's proud gone. of what we've done with your stunt double. Yeah, no, I'm excited to see. You know, this. So is this happens. is this Dave, dude, the the Mon Montana guy? Yeah, yeah. So okay. the way it's gonna work is Ricky's gonna give us his pledge as he's envisioned it so ricky was telling me that he had a dream about this moment the other day and oh, we'll God. just we're we'll going here ricky, like with this. i just we'll give ricky 10 seconds to talk about the pledge that he he made to himself about being dave's stunt double so ricky go ahead with that uh as a native american i was dreaming that i was in a forest and i actually <laughs> did hear the tree fall <laughs> and a mystic, a mysterious and mystique eagle flew up upon me. And I knew after I saw that eagle do a rock walk that I knew I would be the next. That would be my vision of riding from that one eagle walk hop, rock hop, walk, whatever the fuck it is. All right. Hey, Joe. Rock walk. That's where I, be I believe this man's cheese has slid off his cracker. He is worse than you, dude. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Dave, do you accept? Yes. Ricky Just is say your yes. stunt double. Yes. Absolutely. And the best yeah. thing about that is that the rock walk was my first official freestyle trick. Boom. So. And so it is. Oh, who's doing homework? I am. Woo! <laughs> I just want to say the word. Man. Damn, dude.
dude. I'm hey, ready, I gotta bro. say something real. Can I say something? Can I have the floor for a second? Yes. Um, I just wanted to take a moment out of of our silly, goofy show for a serious a serious one here, where I just want, uh, on behalf of Factor Freestyle, uh, I want to send condolences to Eddie Rios and his family. Yeah. Um, Eddie was a huge, huge name uh, in the sport forever. And um, when I was first introduced to anything East Coast, New York City, Eddie Rios was attached to it. And yeah. um, everybody, everybody absolutely loved the guy. And um, I mean, I could go on and on. And um, but, um, you know, he had a really long, long battle with the illness and um you know he fought till the end and he had a million people around them you know that loved them and and they they dedicated a skate park to him right before he passed away so that's awesome that he was able to see that and um we ain't getting any younger so unfortunately we're going to be having stuff like this where we're going to lose people every year and um but he was a uh, he's just a guy that I have always just heard about and everyone loved them, you know, New York city, Eddie Rios. And so rest in peace, Eddie, pour one to the yeah, curb, Eddie. pour one to the curb for Eddie. Fast plant for Eddie. I, uh, I went to his gym in Florida and we hung out for a bit and I called some of the people over at the, well, they call it the foster park now, but Malali's. And I just put him on the phone with a lot of people that haven't seen him in like 20 something years. So it was yeah. really happy. It was even better when he got on his bike, even though he knew he couldn't ride his bike and he ate shit. <laughs> and he, oh. got, he goes, God damn it. He goes, but I'm ready for this. It was, uh, it was really great, man. He was smiling the whole time. I got a lot of photos and stuff of him. It was a good time, man. I, I'm glad I got to meet him. That's awesome. It's cool that they got to, they got the skate park named after him before. So we got to see that before he passed away. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And then, in, and then, in in true BMX form, when they had the newspaper article about him, they called him a skateboarder, oh, which is perfect. Which is just like it's the way it's, it's been our whole lives. When you're a kid, you know, like <laughs> oh, he's a skateboarder. He's a whatever. He's a wrestler. What's he do? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Well, at least they didn't call him a scooter rider. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen some pretty badass scooter guys, man. I think they have. That... I think they have a scooter guy in uh, Barman Valley. Oh no, that's a unicycle. I saw a guy on a unicycle do a rail, which is pretty crazy. We used to sponsor that kid. That kid's from Germany or whatever, not. Yeah. So we used to give him a rim, tires, and pedals, and that dude could do some shit on a unicycle. Hey, is amazing. it? Is it just cheaper to sponsor a unicycle rider? Is that yeah, why this doubt. is? They need less. I used to sponsor to... a dude that did wheelbarrows. I used to sponsor him grips. That was cheaper. That's that's a great idea. Who, that's amazing. Yeah, who was the wheelbarrow that. guy? Uh, it was a dude out of like Oregon or something. He owned a like a power tool shop, and I told him that grips would work on wheelbarrows and stuff. I used to sponsor. Uh, a dog sled team in Alaska of rims. So I'm always looking at ways of helping out people that could be a part of BMX that you don't really think's BMX. Like I'm right now trying to talk to the city of New York to sponsor those um, horse buggies where everybody falls in love. I want to sell them rims and tires. So I've been trying to get up with the city to do that. So I don't know. I try to think outside the box. I got to get everyone into BMX without knowing they're into BMX, you know? Yeah. Why why don't why don't you sponsor guys on a rickshaw through New York with uh with rims and then work your way like the handsome cab I, is what you're talking about. Why don't you sponsor guys on rickshaws to follow the handsome cab guys around to try to get their fares and charge them like 10 bucks less for the rickshaw. I I, I'm just going to do my mouthpiece and whoever I have to get a hold of to talk a little bit, to sing into their microphone, I'll do it. So whatever <laughs> happens, happens. And I don't mind talking all day long, as you can Ricky, tell. Ricky with a headphone running a rickshaw in New York City, trying to steal fares <laughs> from the handsome cab. 
Dave, your stunt double is already paying off. Oh yeah, I can tell. I, this was a great. I don't know. Did you select him amongst a hundred other riders? How many? How many did you have? Two hundred. Uh, I saw the list. The, the list was crazy. When we announced, when we announced that we were going to do this, the DM yeah. kind of inflated quite a bit, and so um, it pushed it pushed Ray to the edge with all of that. What? So yeah, we what? Push me, push me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it did. Ray, Ray was pushed to the to the edge with the nonsense of interviewing for your stunt double. Yeah, oh, uh, actually, they only chose me because my real name is Robert Peterson, and this is actually <laughs> a ploy to come back at you for stealing my trick and making it better all these years. So oh, I, I I'm actually sense. his illegitimate child. <laughs> Wait, your your real name's Robert Peterson for real? How great would that be? <laughs> no, hey, Ray, why don't you change no. your middle name? My my middle name is uh Robert though. Either oh, way, right. it's a horrible joke. Whatever, I tried. Are we gonna Are we gonna find out towards the end of this that you're just completely nude right now too? Like, are you just completely naked? Don't stand up. I'm just it's just a yes or no answer. I mean, I'm. I like your mind. It's open right now, and we're video. gonna we're gonna find out for sure. I'm not wishing you to be nude. I'm just thinking it would be funny if, like, you're like, all right, guys, I'll see you later. And you stand up and <laughs> what, we see a little mushroom Yo, cap on this a will, this will of hair. Be my uh, Craig Grosso. Uh, my this will be my one run after this. I'll do the Craig Grosso and yeah. just make a naked run real quick, and then hopefully gonna... we can get uh, what's his name, Dad, to tackle me real quick. So, Wait, if you're already naked, then you could just jump right into the naked Gumby as Dave would do since you're a stunt double. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. For some reason, I feel like I've been set up, Joe, all of a sudden. <laughs> just now? Yeah, just now. Okay. Well, no, good. I promise. It, 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 <laughs> I, no one set me up. <laughs> no. I think between. No, 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 no. We, we, no, we, so here's the idea, Dave. Ray and I had so much fun imagining the bootleg Back for More tribute show. I, and Dave, Dave, I shut that down real quick, too. I had to. I could. Joe's <laughs> level of nonsense was he was going to go with this. And I was like, look, man, a person can only take so much. So I took it upon myself. I thought it was a great idea, but Joe was going into the Joseph Smith land with it and I was like all right we gotta we gotta end this quickly you but I always try and help well that's exactly thank what you. happened thank you I think yeah thank you yeah 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 no you're totally welcome because we couldn't do a tribute show because we hadn't already done a show that, that I, was one of your points right well no I just I can't believe I can't believe that you guys wouldn't jump at the opportunity to do a show where there's gonna be already be a thousand BMXers there. Like a thousand freestyle guys. Like I just thought that you you guys would be able to drum up enough. Hey Ray, can you use your to like get there and data? do stuff? Like to get the ramps there, there's people Yeah, maybe we need to send Who me? Ray. Yeah. Yeah. Ray, did he did say you me? put on your cellular because your interwebs. It's not. It was is spotty. I had it off. I had. Um. I have it off right now. I have. I'm off. I'm off Wi-Fi. Oh. Okay. It still ain't working. It was a little bit choppy, and I won't. I now won't say it again. Tell me again. If it does it again, I can move. You now know? we see just okay. your finger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe ruined. Joe does this. Joe does this all the time to sabotage it. Now I can't Everyone get back. Knows. Oh, wait, the Zoom meeting. <laughs> there we go. Is this the ET thing? Yeah. yeah. Where we touch ET. real quick? Yeah. Found oh, him. Found him. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. so Dave, so thanks, Ray, thanks. Ray shut this down. Yeah. And then Joe said, Why don't we why don't actually we... put together a show team that is selected by the guys and then ricky calls bike shops all day long and so i was like wait a second if ricky now is forever dave nori's stunt double and by the way you guys didn't name a safe word before you did it so you don't know when you're going to be in or out of character 
then what? Ricky can go and sell the sh the actual show with the um with Ooh. the bootleg show. And then you can train Ricky on the mindset for doing your tricks. Okay. That sounds this good. is a <laughs> <laughs> show. I think you you have this vision that we're gonna be on the on this like 35 show tour all over the US and then go to mm -hmm. Europe and do like another, you know, half a dozen to dozen shows. We can dream. We're, we're talking about like three, maybe six shows tops. Right. Which and is why and we need... already and we already ran out of a month. We're already into the second month for this tour. Of the year? Of the year? So no, we, we only have... Gonna, we I'm not good at math, but that seems June. like we only have 10 months left. <laughs> we're only thinking about the summer, did you, Ray. Hey, Joe, did you ever see those like Middle Eastern like hostage videos where the guys are behind the guy, the pilot, or the guy that just like... Or the, the guy that's <laughs> working as a contractor and they're going to chop his head off and they're standing behind him with the AK-47s and they're yelling yeah. out demands that's what dave's thing looks like right there like i'm am i <laughs> like those look like there's something going on there i just feel like somebody's gonna scoop dave up real quick and throw a tarp hey, on him and hey. then, uh, here he goes <laughs> oh my yeah God. Like, so dave what about this i'm in safe i'm safe don't worry you're man. safe so okay we're... i just want to make sure dave so what death. about this so uh what if ricky books like 10 shows in the u.s okay and then the actual back for more in 24 will appear at one of them at random, but nobody knows until the day of. Sure. There's, there's 14 owners that are all flatlanders. Mm -hmm. If uh, I don't know how you're trying to, are you trying to do this an in-person show or you're just trying to do on this show? What are you trying to no. do? No. So the idea would be, uh, Montana Ricky in the role of Dave Norrie, Trevor Watchering in the role of Ron Wilkerson, and Cole Volker in the role of Brian Blyther um, appear at bike shops to do shows. <laughs> uh, where, where are we going to get? Can we? Who's going to be Diz Hicks? Because we need it. We need a Diz. We need a rock. <laughs> <laughs> you uh someone can volunteer to be Diz Hicks. Uh, and so they put the show together and then it starts to be super fun that people are showing up doing the tricks in the style of the OGs. And then at random one day, the actual OG team shows up and does their show, but no one knows when it's gonna happen. Well, I have 14, like I said, the 14 to 13 Flatlanders own bike shops, which, by the way, without Flatland, we wouldn't have what we have in BMX nowadays. I don't think mm -hmm. enough people talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I talk to the majority of them every single day, almost. So something could happen. Um, and by the way, whenever he talks to bike shops, he doesn't have a shirt on. Never, <laughs> never. Even even when the wives answer, it's funny because I'm I'm the first person to invent doing FaceTime calls to bike shops because I they can't say no when they look you in the face, so it's like a good ploy for me. And they always say, "Oh God, you're naked, right?" And I'm like, "Of course, imagine it." <laughs> but but now he can say, "I'm Dave Nori." Yeah, I just tell them I'm I'm working on my Gumby, and they just get and, excited. And people out. say I got a call from Dave Nori today, and he was naked and he needed a Gumby. <laughs> That's what's gonna have to explain. I just, I just tell them to remember my Miami Hopper peg spin, and they just get excited about it. <laughs> That's still awesome. That peg spin, it, Miami Hopper peg spin. It's, it's amazing. Are you able to do it on that bike yet, Dave? Yes, um, it actually feels a little better because of the steeper head tube angle. But it's still such an inconsistent trick to pull. Wilkerson's advice is just to spin like a quarter turn and just ride out. And I'm, I'm not satisfied with that. I got to spin at least a 360 mm -hmm. right out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a great idea, uh, Joe. Like all your ideas, they're great. And to pull 
it off, that's all on you. Um, I think Colby Blyther, I saw that one picture that you put his, his mug on his uh, one of Brian's one hand, one footer airs, and it looked like it looked like it totally could be Brian. That and then Trevor is Wilkerson because he's doing all the lip tricks. That makes total sense. So Stoney's responsible for that casting. Oh, good job, Stoney. Thanks. I do what I can. And the announcer? You gotta have an announcer, Joe. Yeah. Ray, who plays the part of Kevin Martin? I want to uh, see Ray be Kevin Martin. Ray would be an no. awesome Kevin Martin. Maybe Jerry Severson could be Ron or could be Kevin hey, no, Martin. Sir. Yeah. Jerry, I was thinking Jerry Look, Severson, we got a double maybe. thumbs up from him, dude. All right. I'm a back. Double, a double thumbs up. And he said, I'm back. What did I Look miss? This, dude, if, we, if Dave Nori could have this enthusiasm. Oh, man. You know? Are you crazy? I didn't want to interrupt, but let's get back no. to it. We're booking, we're, so um, for Back From War in 24, we're working on a bootleg tour. Oh, yeah. Where we're going to. Uh, well, we just said we weren't doing a bootleg doubles. tour. But we, wait a, now I'm wait a, We're not, we're not going to do the one at Buckeye Bike Show. Because oh. that was uncoordinated. It was literally me oh, on the phone. Right making calls and i dave i did have a, a show team booked by the way um so when i we said we're not going to do, do the stunt double one you said okay but then you just switched it now to something else what uh i when you said <laughs> we cannot show up at buckeye bike show with right a show team R uh, okay like, so you took you're right so what i meant was let's just end it all but you just took it as the one show Oh, it, I mean, it's well, okay. I mean, I don't care. What are we going to this At this point, you know, I've, I've used this term before. It's like shoveling shit against the tide. At this point, <laughs> there's nothing I say or do is going to end whatever Joe wants to do. It's just going to keep coming back around in a different form, in a different path. Exactly. It's just going to it morph just keeps, into it, the, yeah. the next Joeism. I mean, it's just like I'm Joeism starting to feel stuff. like Dave now. I'm getting ready to hand out warm coconut waters right now. <laughs> I'm exactly. starting to feel Dave's pain. It's not that bad. Exactly. Oh. And you're going, to get a couch. you're going to get a couch for this show next time. because you're Yeah, going to yeah, yeah. Couch. Gonna... I'm going to build a potato dome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so Jerry gave gave over his footage for of the first two hip contest. And we have, uh, let me bring Davo up to speed. By the way, instead of calling him Montana Ricky, we're only going to talk to him in character, and his character's name is Davo. Can, so it, be Davo, Dave, can it be Davy? Because that's what Bob Howard used to call me. Uh, and, yeah, I, sure. and I didn't really like it, so don't make me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Davey, all right. Thanks. Thanks. I, I like, like you too. too. I, you know, I appreciate you, Dave. I know I didn't shave. I didn't get my myself all set up for oh, you. No, that's, that's this but, is just the prep. This is just the prep. But Davy, yeah, Bob Har used to call me Davy Dave. <laughs> oh, that's great. So, I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Yes. Davy McGee. All right. Okay. Continue, Joe. So, what should let's maybe let's start with. Uh, the deep origin story of you and Bob Harrow. Now we know that it started with the <laughs> overgripping, and we've been over that a lot. But oh my God. can you maybe share another formative story about your relationship with Bob that that Davy can use to, you know, get into character? Well, wait, who's Davy now? You're confusing me. That Ricky is Davy. Okay, got it. Um, yeah, let's see. When I, because I've already told these stories, I have to think of the new story, Joe. Yeah, preferably want? because because Davy has been studying like all of the back shows. He was telling me. Okay, um, so he's heard. So he's yeah, he's heard all the stories about 
um, the first contest, the overgripping, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, the first time we went on tour when the ramp threw off, off the ramp. Um, let me think of another good one. Which street was the Seven uh, Eleven on that you bought the magazine on when you? Uh, oh, that's a your first great question. Huh? Yeah, that's a great question. So it must be Thirtieth, and oh God, what's the cross street? Thirtieth Street. I know that. Google Map it, Joe. Yeah, Thirtieth San Diego. And, street and view I, it. It's close to Juniper, but it's not Juniper. Uh so. Like what if you go to the street view and somebody's doing a Gumby in front of it? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually so, pretty so, I'm surprised you remember that part too. Yeah, that first time I saw the, yeah, the picture of me in the magazine. That's the 7 Eleven I bought it at. Um, right. Let me think of another one, good one from Bob. Uh, it's like I didn't really interact a lot with Bob over the years, really, really. Um, I guess it's just, I can just tell the story again, Joe, when I got the, that first phone call. Because Bob promised me. Bob he called you? Call me. Yeah, after, after meeting me at Lakeside at this contest, he told me, I have some shows coming up. I'll give, be giving you a call in the next couple of weeks. And I thought, this is Bob Haro. He probably tells that to many writers. And I was just my expectation. Yeah, my ex I, I didn't think he was screwing with me. I just thought that he was, you know, probably just saying that as he wants to have lots of options if something were to come up. But I, I was not holding my breath, let's say. And sure enough, almost to the day, two weeks later, he called me up. And uh, it was, I couldn't believe it because he said, come on up. We've got a bike for you and your gear. And we want to show um, in two weeks up in Sacramento. So from that day on, I was just like, oh my gosh. I got now a the neon got, green master. No, that would have been an 84 white master because it was wow. It was uh, October, it was October of 84 that I did my first show. What do you think ever happened to that bike? I gave it away. I gave yeah. it away. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know people talk about that. That bike would, would be worth more than the more than the potato dome right now if you had yeah, that but bike. Maybe somebody's somebody's got it now. They're passing it down to their grandchild. No, it like, they probably got wheeled to the curb. No, don't say that. Don't well, say I'm that. just saying, like, that's what the uh, odds are. You know what I mean? If you gave oh. it to somebody and like nobody kept bike, like a bike was just a bike. You know what I mean? Like it's. But Dave's you know, story is against all the odds. Oh okay. That, but... Hey, um, Dave but... was 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 Wilkerson and Blyther on the team already? Were they already on Haro? No, they were not. It was, it was Rich, wow. Rich here. <laughs> yeah. So so the order was, um, Rich Segear and Tony Murray were the people that I did the shows with, but they signed, I believe that um i didn't sign the contract until november and i think at that point they were already in negotiations i think ron and brian were just picked up but that particular show ron and brian were not on the team that was before be Zinka to ask broke when, up. i'm going to see so, ron and brian this week weekend we're going to go to matt and visit matt this weekend so uh, um, that's cool we're just going to surprise him he doesn't he doesn't know we're coming and we're just going to hang out for a day, take him to dinner, see how he's doing. And I'll, I'll ask those guys when they actually signed, if they remember, um, because I'm curious to know who actually signed first. It was all right around the same time. That's something. Ron Wilton yeah, was could, gone I could... at that point? I'm sorry, what was that, Jerry? Ron Wilton was gone at that point? Yeah, so that's that's the story. Uh, and maybe Montana could tell you. Montana, do you know that story? I don't know that story, but... Oh, good. It... Okay, then I'll tell that story. Okay, go ahead. So I was at the contest in Huntington Beach, and that was the very first contest I went to. Ron Wilton, I knew him quite well because I'd seen him a lot at Mission Beach. We hung out, rode there, and he was the guy that would come up and just be on this, like, 
perfect master with you know the graphite uh yeah. mags and all the all the latest stuff and he'd do like 180 rollback the 540s like that was one of his signature moves um so this is yeah. it mission beach like 83 84 and uh when i did this contest at huntington beach he said to me i can't really tell you much but there's likely going to be a change at haro and what was happening was he left haro to go on to bmx uh, the trick team with with rl bmx action trick team so oh, he wow. basically kind of gave gave me a little in talked to bob and said hey bob i think there's someone you should check out um and then i was i was the first flatland only rider that signed for Haro. Oh, cool. So wow, really that's pretty Wilton, cool. Wilton, and I still, to this day, every time I see him on Facebook, you know, I always like to thank him for that opportunity because it really is Ron Wilton that, that opened the door for me. Look at that. Very nice. I wish yeah. people did that more often and gave kudos. Kids nowadays don't even understand things where they've got or where they are. Like, uh, if you know nowadays if a kid gets on haro they think it's whack <clears throat> or if you get on gt it's stupid you know and then mm. huffy's starting up a team again but they're only doing it for the olympics and kids just don't mm. care i wish you know i try my hardest to teach these kids even though i'm you know my time was 92 to 2006 but still you know you need to know what was before that and there's just no history passed on they just don't have the the dorkiness that we have so yeah. you giving that is awesome. Wasn't Craig Campbell like the yeah. first uh, outside of the state sponsored for Haro too? Probably, very likely. I, I I don't know the details, but I know he was on. For, I think eighty five he was on for um, at least a few years before he went over to Skyway, right? Yeah, because uh, so, Mike Dominguez was like the bigger dude, right? In eighty four. Yeah. Yeah. And so Eddie, Eddie Fuel was on Haro for like a week and a half during the photo shoot, as I yeah. understand yeah. it. And they then... they put him on the team for the photo shoot to do the bike, <laughs> and then we're like, "All right, see you later." They took the uniform and bike back, and we're like, "See you later. <laughs> Have fun with your twerker. <laughs> Fuck out of here." Yeah, nice. But, <laughs> but Joe, I think I've seen a theme that's happening though, because I can tell that. Montana is very um, concerned about making sure that the history and the and the roots are, are shared with the you know younger generation, and the same thing goes with Trevor. Have you had conversations, Joe, recently with Trevor about this? Because he, when I was at Cornhuck, and he was like, when when the writers that are in their basically fifties and sixties are gone then who's going to tell the story? So he really wants to keep it going. So I think that could be the thread of what this tour, this bootleg slash historical, like- Oh, it's, 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 knowledge it's the bootleg tour. It's the oral history tour. Yeah, yeah. like, the, and that's, and these guys are coming up and, and Cole, I'm sure Cole will be, Cole's a little bit quiet, but that's okay because Ryan's quiet, you know, so it kind of fits the role. But Trevor is passionate. I mean, I'm serious. He's passionate about making sure that there's some way for people to know the history. So it turns out that this was a good idea, right? I never knocked it. I'm just saying it. I don't know how you're going to pull it off. I'm going to pull it off. Well, it's not, I'm not going to be the one pulling it off. Like the idea is the motivator. I'm not telling people what to do. Davey is super stoked on this and Trevor the only reason Trevor couldn't do Buckeye Bike Show is that he was doing Lego he was booked at Legoland but he's super stoked and Stony so so very similar to my story that I was booked at the preschool okay we're, we're you, on the same yeah. page then. <laughs> right <laughs> preschool <laughs> okay yeah, I got you, Joe. I I can see the dig. Okay. As Go Dave ahead. pulls a, it's a not juice a box, dig. It's Dave, not Dave a will dig. pull a juice box out from underneath his blanket, dig his sip, <laughs> as he not, talks about. It's not a dig. It's true. It's what he told me. I only I'm, tell the truth. Oh, 
go. Okay. I don't want you to feel like I'm digging to okay. be mean. Uh, this is God's honest truth. He said, yeah. "Oh my gosh, I am I I am so honored." He used the word honored. Uh, and then Stony was like, "Joe, you have to. We have to have Trevor as Ron." And when you see yeah. Ron, can you, uh, can you beg, request Ron to give mentoring to Trevor on the mindset that Trevor needs to have to emulate Ron on tour? Can you do that? I wonder, well, I wonder if there's an event that they would both go to prior to. Oh, yeah. I yeah, don't know maybe. what, because Ron, I mean, Ron's traveling a lot, but he's not going to a lot of, um, a lot of BMX, not the events that I'm going to, at least. Trevor doesn't I'll, I'll make it him. out of the Midwest a whole lot. He'll make it out yeah. to Woodward in Pennsylvania, and that's about, uh, and, and Florida, and, apparently, but and, that's about and it. And Corn Huckett. He went to Corn Yeah, Corn Huckett. Corn Huckett. Uh, Where is yeah. Ron going? Ron, Ron does his own thing. I mean, really, he's he's not really, he's not going to, like, old school. I mean, I've got a great movie, idea. I I've got a great idea. Jerry okay. Severson, okay. Oh no! Yeah. What if you? Yeah. What if? Oh. What if you? This is good already. Trevor tips on how to become Ron's protege. Yep. Oh, yeah, you know, you don't have to, <laughs> it doesn't have to come directly from the source. I think no, I maybe, was with him for a while does. there. I see okay, it all. so 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 Jerry, if if you were to advise another um protege <laughs> yeah. how would you advise trevor to, to work for ron for it only has to be a few days <laughs> oh my god you know wow i mean just going back to that again just make cracks me up you know i can't believe it <laughs> i could talk about it again today tomorrow and the, the next three weeks, you know, going Let's out to it. your, you know, yeah. going out to your hero's house, you know, and then just <laughs> all of a sudden it's just you two locked in a room. You're like, okay, <laughs> what now? You know, it's everything just kind of goes away at that point. You're just two people, you know, all the bike stuff and everything. It's like, oh, you, you know? know what I just realized when when Jerry showed up at Wilkerson's, oh, Jerry was like. I can't believe I'm at Wilkerson's, my my hero. I'm such a huge fan. I'm going to work at Two Hip. I'm going to be involved. And Ron was looking at him going, this is an extra 400 bucks a month for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what he was thinking. That's all Ron, Ron like, was you thinking. Know, he's like, I got this dude's going to work and he's going to give me 400 bucks. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at 8 50 an hour. You know, the emails he sent me were so promising, you know, just that's what really if persuaded Joe could me. get a hold of those emails and just do a zine. <laughs> oh, I got them. I'll, well, next time I'll, I'll read them. I'll read them yeah. on air. I mean, that's what, yeah, if we could have, uh, if we could have a reading <laughs> of the emails. Yeah. But if we could, if we could have your exit letter, that would be the greatest thing ever. Oh, the God. letter you left on the bench and then went wonder, home. I wonder if he still got that. He one. could. But, You'd never know. I didn't have the guts. I didn't have the nerve. You may have been the last person to be in that room. Yeah, I was. The, I didn't have the nerve, the heart to tell him that this, this wasn't for me. You know, at all. And the sleeping in this room and freezing at night and having no money and living like a bum. I I just couldn't do it. There wasn't a future there for me. You know, I couldn't do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And he, he, you know, when I got there, he told me that's how it was going to be, you know. I mean, I'm like, wow. So the, okay. question, the question is, Trevor needs to be asked that. Can, can Trevor get to a point where he could he could hire this young kid for six bucks an hour and have them sleep on the floor? Because if he's going to embody Wilkerson, and, and this is what Jerry's actual yeah. experience was, yeah. Trevor's got to go there. I don't know if Trevor can, Trevor's going to have to really work on that, I think, because he's too nice of a guy. <laughs> Trevor can figure it out. I mean, this is like, did you ever see that movie Fight Club? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is what Trevor's got to do. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it so only has to be for a couple of days, but he has to become uh there's, Tyler there's two levels. There's two levels to it, I see, Joe. One is the riding aspect. And I'm excited to go over with, with Montana today if we have time. Because there's certain tricks that are like if you can get these down, you'll you'll look like Dave Laurie all day. And you just have to do these three tricks and that's it. Four tricks maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh and they don't have to even be the gumby or a peg anything like it could just be a slider and a freak a freak squeak uh, and, uh, and well vanderroll would be good but that's you know i do i do the vanderroll the other way so i'll get on a quarter and then roll backwards and then come back into the, I, I don't know if you ever seen me ride so no I've, might... se I've seen some of your videos of you goofing off in your shop and stuff i love them yeah, yeah. Great. so but, I, I do have an idea i just i'm my back's fucked up, but we'll we'll put some work in because that's what yeah. I thought I had to but, do. But I thought I had level... to put an edit out. <laughs> well, that's... For this. that's what I thought. I thought I had to go out and ride like you, then come here and you were gonna show the video. And I was like, my back's fucked, I can't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think we I think this is just the, the preliminary like starting point of like, okay, let's pick the tricks that and we can kind of yep. amongst pick us the decide. Tricks. But but a slider is definitely one. Uh, you know, I do so many sliders. A slider with a bar spin, okay, that would be cool. But just a slider, you know. And then uh, we're doing the slider right now. Yeah, depending on what, uh, yeah, what level that you want to get to. But I think there's like four tricks that will just be, you know, it'll be obvious that you're riding my style. But the other layer, Joe, what I'm saying is that okay, now you got to get inside dave nori's head like how do i operate mm -hmm. what's my what's always been the mode of operation what is my intent you know from from now to way back then because it really hasn't changed much and i think that's the same with wilkerson and i think it's the same with blyther you want to really, rehearse really? doing that as people uh, dave, davey yeah. why don't you ask dave a probing simple question about what makes him tick yeah, that's that's a good starting point. Well, I think his quote from when he was 17, when he said that uh, BMX is life and he's never going to quit or whatever, not kind of proves it. Uh, you were born, what, December 2nd, 1965. So that makes you. Jesus, fuck. Oh. How old are we right now? I can't even do 58? the math. 58. 50, 58. 58, yeah. Okay, so that's young for Flatland. That's like. That's like being in your 30s in Flatland. Now. Exactly. I mean, especially my tricks that I'm doing. Like, you know, I'm doing a lot of sliders still. So I, I think <laughs> the, the one question that I have is how humbling can you be being a part of the beginning? And everybody that I talk oh, to yeah. that's from that time has something that's stuck with them where they've got a little bit of bitterness. And I've noticed from listening to you talk or the way you portray yourself you're not you don't have this like if you hear someone's name i don't think you're one of those type of people that instantly goes to the negative on that person you you you, you seem like a guy that finds the positive in everybody so I just, uh, yeah yeah i don't have i don't have anybody that i hate i remember when i was raising my boys and they were certain to, you know like maybe eight nine using the word hate i go hate that's such a strong word like you know you really should think about what you're saying and i think that's your point exactly like i never i always want to see the best of, of of the person even in the most you know challenging of situations so I'll, I'll tell you a story about back in the day and i was telling you i was giving the bikes away yeah and uh this guy I, i'm not going to say his name because i again i just don't want it's not about that it's just about yeah. the, the the message yeah, the message and, and just my position on it. So I was um, giving a lot of bikes away. And he was like, hey, you know, I, I'll buy these bikes. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. And um, I sold him a bike for like 100 bucks or something, 150 bucks. And because Haro was always having me change the frame out yeah. because the, the it would fade. You know, the stickers would get faded or the frame would get faded. I put new stickers on it. They're like, no, you got it. You know, that neon green didn't last, but you know, a month or two before it started to fade, especially when I'm in the sun all the time, down on the beach or whatever. So 
I sold him the frame, whatever, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. I can't remember. Really, pretty cheap, I think, like a good deal. And uh, he wouldn't pay me. And he, and he wouldn't pay me. And so I remember there was a bike shop that we used to go to in Santee. And I went to the bike shop and I took his bike because he had it there <laughs> being worked on. And I took his bike and it just backfired. Like it just snowballed into so much more, you know, stuff that I, I just never go there, Montana. Yeah. I don't like to. I don't like to cause con confrontation, even though he should have paid me the money, but right. it's not, it's, it's just, well, I, I think your story speaks volumes because usually when I'm sponsoring kids or I'm working with kids, I always tell them like, look, don't sell shit that you get for free. I was like, mm -hmm. you should be giving that to kids to motivate them. And then the dudes that are BMX whores like myself, that want to buy the stuff, make sure you do your homework and you give it to somebody that doesn't sell memorabilia, that doesn't yeah. put it up on offer up or, you know, uh, mid school BMX. I, I think they're missing the point. Like for you, that's like a piece of your skin that you're shaving off. And to them, it's, it's like a trophy, right? But some of those guys are vultures and they like to sell it. That's a big, huge thing that I have in BMX where I just get really because I'm into preserving the history. Like, I'm the dork that wants Troy McMurray's uh, braids when he got drunk in 1994 before Blue Taxi Velvet or whatever. He shaved his, his dreads. I wanted those. Where were you I, a year ago? Huh? No, that's that's last year. I'm getting those. He sent no. me those ones. But I no, want I'm the saying, ones. I'm saying I, I, I sold all. I think... I think you're talking about people that sell shit. And I, I sold everything, so I hope you're not mad at me. You no, want to no, buy no, Gary Pollock's old bike, by the way? No, you're, you're I have Gary Pollock's last BMX. I got Gary Pollock's last 92 GT here for sale. Hold on. You're, you're oh, wait. You're wait until he gets inducted. Way. Wait until he gets inducted. Wait, be... But you're, you're taking it the mm -hmm. wrong way. What I mean by this is when you get vultures that purposely know people and then get stuff for free, and they're just going to intend on selling it. Yeah, uh, just they, they're like flippers. They're flippers. Yeah, flippers. Right, and, and I have no problem with but, you know, uh, 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 Micah. Micah does it correct. The dude at mid school does it correct. For me, I, there's, I'm just like Dave. I don't want to say names, but there's one person that's really bad at this, and it upsets me because everything that I have, like uh, Brian Foster's X Games gold winning helmet, I had, I gave it to the museum or uh chad powers I, I think chad powers is doing really great for bmx and i think if anybody has things he's doing the right thing by buying that two hundred thousand dollar bike shop and he made a museum but i just have a hard time when people purposely take advantage of someone like dave in your situation where this guy's like oh it doesn't mean nothing to dave and you're like well at least give me money so the message is i just feel like selling stuff in that situation as a sponsored rider is, is a tough deal because as an owner, I, I, you know, that cost me money and then you're profiting off me twice, but then that's hey, all Dave, gone, Dave, know? if you yeah. ever get, if you ever get bully robbed again, you let us know and we're going to take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you no, tell I... Joe, somebody did something wrong, he'll start making zines and sending them shrimp rocks and doing all kinds of stuff. Well, Tell him, Joe. It, it'll get it'll get point, handled. Case in point, when Bob got remember when Bob sent those bikes to Florida and didn't get paid, Joe, didn't you step in and and hunt the guy? I down did, I did. Yeah. I had I had my guy. Uh, his guy, his guy. I, I got a wood guy, well, a to, to, guy. Not to be yeah. named. Yeah. Guy. So this is what happened. Hot tub guy. <laughs> hot tub guy. Bob sent all those bikes to Florida. I called a guy. In, I called my guy in Florida who called his guy who was um, on the police department and he had eyes on the entire lot of bikes. And I said, look, Bob, this is how it's going to go. You're going to give me one of the serial numbers from the lot. And that's all they need to go in and seize it and send it back. And he was like, and I told him the guy's name, like his 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 nickname, and Bob was like, "You know a guy named blah 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 blah," and I'm like, "Yeah, 
And he goes, I'm going to let this one go. And Bob backed away. <laughs> but, so, but, but we had we had the sting operation. Like uh, they were they were in position, ready to pounce. It was very similar to Ray pulling the plug on the Buckeye Bike Show tribute. <laughs> well, it's nice. But I'm out of that business now. Good and business. Oh, I'm hey Ray, Batman business. Repo. Yeah, you, you mentioned you sold all your stuff. Is that what? Is that what? You... Everything. Like I got. I don't even have a club homeboy sticker. I have Gary Pollock's last bike, and a and a number plate right behind me that he got from Brian Blyther in '84. And that's all I have. Uh, I don't have a magazine. I don't have a sticker. That, I don't have any clothing. Nothing. That sounds exactly like what I did. I had everything. You get sick of it, sort of. And not when I got sick of it, you just want other people to. No, nothing got thrown out. Like the people that bought the shit love it. Like they that oh, was yeah. the whole fun was buying. I would people going like, I haven't seen this poster since I was fourteen, and now now it's in my garage. So yeah, it's pretty just... awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I did the exact same thing. I had like over twenty bikes. I had every, I had twenty five boxes full, of, you know, freestylings. I had every, and then I got my Haro freestyler with graphites, and and then that was it. I sold it all. I, I just feel better now, you know. It's just weird how you how you, you just spend just years and years collecting. <laughs> just, yeah, it's weird. You can you you yeah. can like. You love it, but then you just want to let it go. Like people yeah. do that with cars. Like I know people, I know I have tons of friends that have like bought a car, like that was like, like just like a, a roller, just like like a frame and whatever. And then they spend six years fi fixing it up, making it perfect. And as yeah. soon as it's done, they sell it. Yeah, like that's the day it. it's done. They're like, that's exactly what I did. And I threw it yeah. out. Yeah. It was the weirdest thing. I threw it out. <laughs> I threw yeah. it out. It just that's exactly, that just when you, thing. yeah. When you said you sold your stuff, I, I just had to ask because yeah, I did the exact I got same thing. Yeah, except Montana Ricky's gonna buy Gary's '92 factory pro model, whatever it's called. Uh, he's buying I, it for a big well, dollar. He looks like he's got a lot of dough. So, he looks like one of them rich kids. So I guess uh, the way I'm saying this is, you guys. <laughs> took something that you loved and you let it go i just mean that i don't like vultures so you guys ain't oh yeah for sure you guys that are part of it that let somebody else have a piece of the treasure i just have a problem with the guys my age right now that are purposely doing what they're doing so for me i don't oh, i'm not really? the gatekeeper but if i got a big enough fucking mouth and people want to hear me I, I have no problem going against those guys where i just don't like it so Maybe it's because I'm a it, to me. He's the it, new Batman. Yeah, to me, it just got to the point of you know, like if it wasn't my bike, I you know I built up a bike exactly like mine, yeah, blah yeah. blah, but it wasn't the one I rode, and yeah, like I still got my helmet and I got my first trophy ever won. And those are about the only Whoa. two things I ever kept. Because you know, it actually meant something to you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I these are pieces. These are pieces like that Indiana Jones would hunt yeah. down. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like the that oh. Hoffman watch. Oh, and the, yeah. Oh, and Dave. And the tape. And the tape. And the oh, tape. The mix tape. That's the key. He mentioned Matt. Oh, was you talking about Matt Hoffman or? <laughs> what? Was Dave talking about Matt Hoffman earlier? Yeah. Or was uh, I gave Joe Matt Hoffman's swatch that he wore when he did a 900 and he landed and it fell off his wrist. I gave it. instead of auctioning it off for thousands, I gave it to Joe. Oh, and nice. the tape that was playing while he did the nine hundred, I had that too. It was my mixtape for the for the two hip contest. See, those are oh, okay. things. Those are amazing things. Those are things where guys like me get a little boner. So I like well, stuff like a that. little boner. Don't say that well, with the... your shirt off, please. But anyway, <laughs> you're, you're smiling. Why are you smiling when I say that? Because though? I'm picturing Joe look, look watching this when he comes back. Like when he redoes this, he's like, "What did they talk about when we left?" And he's gonna be like, "Ray was talking about 
Rick Joe, Joe, shirtless I, and with a boater. I don't mean to interrupt Ray, but I'm quitting the show again because this is getting too vulgar. Sorry, guys. Oh, <laughs> shut up and sit down. Wait a second. Wait a second. No. Wait a second. I just stepped away. What's what happened with the vulgarity? <laughs> when Dave quit the show. Well, did did Dave say there he's going to see Matt Hoffman this weekend? Is that what yeah. I heard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got stuff right here that you won't believe. Do you remember the first go co- that go cover where Matt Hoffman is doing the first backflip? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Black and white and all that. Check this out. Can you see it's this? Blurry. It's blurry. Yeah, it's blurry. We know it though. We oh, know the shot. Come on. Yeah. What's going on? Put Is it that next the to your original face. shot. Oh, you got to take your blurry feature off. Put it next too. to your face. Yeah. Take your. Or take, uh, or take, take your, your blurry, blurry thing off. So put it right. Your put it right next to your face. You have put, what put your nose. I, put it under your I nose. Put it under I your nose. I didn't really quit, Joe. I didn't really quit. You have to put it under your nose. There you go. Talking about. Look at this. Is that a painting? You bought the painting. painting. Oh, get your face down into it. Yeah, there you go. Put now. Show. Put it was. Get your okay. teeth on the top of it. Get or you could just hit a button that gets rid of the fuzz. Yeah, yeah there I'll you do go. it. I'll, I'll no, find no, no. it. <laughs> no, no. Put your teeth on it again. This is exhausting. <laughs> this is exhausting. Yeah, oh, that's a that's a paint. That's a Matt Hoffman painting of yeah. Matt Hoffman doing the backflip. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. That's a Matt Hoffman painting. Yeah, I'll get it to. Uh... Yeah, that's it's incredible. I bought it from him a long time ago, and uh, wow. I was like, all these ideas. He's like, oh, I'll paint that cover. And I got it still sitting here. I mean, oh my it's, gosh! Yeah, it's unbelievable. When you when the... you received that in the mail, what <laughs> t- what were the dreams that you had that night? Oh my god! I mean, I'm like, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. This was, I mean, you know, Matt Hoffman of all. I mean, I uh, let me see. <clears throat> this is him with the painting. Put your teeth on it again. Get a fresh haircut. Oh yeah, yeah there that you go. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you see it cleared up when he showed his teeth? <laughs> if I knew how to do this thing, man, you'd be set. But no, I mean, Matt Hoffman's been a great guy. I'm just a fan. I used to go to events. He'd always, you know, we'd meet up and he'd remember me and we'd talk. And he's been like, the, he got me in the X Games when it was here every year. I mean, back, I mean, VIP passes. It was, I mean, he didn't have to do anything for me. I'm just some guy. And it, it's unbelievable. He's, you know, that painting right there. It's something, you know, I'll keep forever. I even hey, got another Jerry, one. What did you what did you think when you watched Joe Kid on a Stingray and you and you were looking at the credits? Do you remember that? The credits of Joe Joe Joe, Joe Kid? My name's in there? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Because a friend Mark, of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Because a friend of mine actually put some uh, footage of Woody Itson in there that he filmed, okay. and his name wasn't in the credits. Oh, okay. Mine was. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was great. I mean, because, I mean, that's, you know, that's the video, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Mark Mark Eaton, Mark Eaton was showing it to me, and I saw it, and uh, and I'm like, dude, he's going to die when he sees that. He goes, well, that's why I put it in. He goes, he goes there's, a, there's a certain group of people that are going to watch this film and at the end, they're gonna read everybody's name. And while oh, yeah. he's reading everybody's name, he's gonna see his. That's exactly oh, yeah. why he did it, which I thought was really funny. Yeah, that was great. I couldn't believe it because yeah, so you're I remember part of it. Yeah, when we were in Vegas that first time, at yeah, that uh, uh, that old school get the very first one. Nora Cup. Great. Yeah, it was a two thousand two thousand and something Nora Cup. Yes, maybe two thousand two or one or something. Yeah, and that's when it really came together. And uh, yeah. we were talking, and you know, any footage, blah blah. And we didn't wasn't enough time, but gosh, that because that was like the first time we seen all I've seen all these people since the eighties. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that was unbelievable. I got I got a video of that too. I don't know if you ever seen it. It's on yeah, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I was wearing my AFA shirt. AFA shirt. <laughs> I tried buying it off your back. Yeah. That's when I was in full buying mode. And I'm like, Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I are. pulled out money and I'm like, what do you want for that shirt right now? Yeah. And you're like, I'll, I'll put it on eBay. You're like, I'll just buy it right now. I'll <laughs> buy it right now. Why put it on eBay? Yeah. No, that was great, man. I, I couldn't believe it. So that's in there. I, you know, I haven't watched that in a long time, but boy, it's, uh, you know, if anybody, I couldn't believe it. So that's cool that you mentioned that. I didn't think anybody even knew or cared, you know. We remember everything. Yeah, I see that. 
Greg hey. does, at least. Hey. And Dennis McCoy does. Yeah, hey, Dennis guys. McCoy and myself, we remember everything. Yeah, between the two, they're like the bookmarks of history. Because, I mean, uh, I, I know Matt, I mean, he's kind of been missing in action for a long time now. Is, is he doing all right? Or Yeah, Joe and I went and saw him about a year ago. Yeah, I got you. It's a new video that caused... Uh, all right, keep going. You ready? No, we're going to do this all in one scoop. Uh, so all right, now okay. you go this way. All right. I can officially say I work for Hoffman. You work? Is it okay to put it in here? Is this okay? For, that's that? perfect. Thank okay. you. Anything else you can clean up right now? You can, um... Uh, a little over a year ago, and he's, uh... He was in a really bad car accident and had a horrible, like, brain injury where... Yeah. I don't know the exact, the like, the specific whatever, but he, like, can't do... He can't ride. He can't base jump. He can't do anything physical. Oh, He's wow. got to just kind of walk around the house. So, um, but he loves it when people come to visit. Like, we were there for six hours. We were there forever. So, oh, when, yeah. when Dave and them go there coming up, he'll he'll really like it. Oh, yeah, cool. I've always wanted to go there. That's his house is really cool. His house, his garage, he just has shit laying around. Like, and it's all he's got like the 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 motorcycle, and he's got these two like big ass Cadillacs. Like, it's just and the garage is like wide open, nobody home with all these bikes and all this. Like, you talk about historical shit. There's a leather oh, jacket yeah. in there. Leather jacket, his chest plate, his helmets. All what about the contraptions, Ray? Tell them about the contraptions. The like the which ones? The one the the chest plate to keep his arm from popping out. Yeah, <laughs> he, right. he had like it was like a stem or something that he was making a contraption for a different type of tail whip, and he rigged up like. I don't know if it was a, it wasn't a gyro on a seat, but it was something on the stem that I did the what craziest thing. And he was like, well, yeah, I was basically trying to figure out how to have a gyro on a different part of the bike to have that spin around. And it was like, I wanted to take a picture of it, but I also wanted to respect and just not um, but I figured, oh yeah, well, Ray's probably going to remember. But it was something crazy, yeah. like <laughs> like the crossbar would spin or something. Yeah. I don't, I don't get into bikes and technical stuff like that. I'm just there for the nonsense. You know what I mean? If somebody oh, yeah. hit him in the face with I a do. pie, I'd remember that. Yeah. But <laughs> who gives a shit about a, a gyro? You know, I can hey, give a shit about bike parts. Look, guys. So something I was just scanning through IMDb to look for the credits on Joe Kid on a Stingray. And then it said more from Eddie Fiola. And apparently Eddie was in The Bourne Legacy. Eddie was in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Eddie was in Spider-Man 3. But Eddie was also in The Italian Job. And do you know how long uh, in The Italian Job that it took Charlize Theron to crack the safe? 43 <laughs> seconds. Four minutes and 43 seconds. Eddie yeah. Fiola might be the guy telling the Hollywood writers to put yeah. 43 in movies. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> We've oh, been nice. chasing this Good detective for how work, long? Joe. Good detective work. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I brought hey, that Joe, up. I think we need to take a little moment of silence for, um, for the loss of Todd. Because that's pretty huge. Yeah, know, Todd quit. Guys... That's crazy. That's almost and as it... devastating as when Dave quit. I know, and it's for real. <laughs> it's not. It's not any fake like the theatrical. Uh, were we too thing. mean to Todd? I know we were mean to Dave, but it was all in love and fun. But no, what did what did what reason. do you think pushed Todd over the edge? No, because he's got know, nothing Todd... going on. He can come. And he can show up <laughs> once a month for two hours on a Saturday. So you know what I mean? Todd is one of the busiest guys in BMX no. because he's no. always making things happen and he's no. making the American BMX Flatland League happen right now. No. He's a yes guy. And Joe, he's a yes guy. So if 
if somebody says How? To, uh, to, to Todd, can you make this flyer for me? He's going to say yes. I'm not asking How busy him can you be busy. to rent out a room to have people ride on flat ground? They can't take that yeah. much time. You know what I mean? I Open the doors and let them go in there and do their run. How I, I, I busy think, could you be? I think There's what Todd something else. No, Todd resolves differences of opinion and different no. different viewpoints. And so one of the things that uh, will happen in contests is you'll have five guys with ideas. No one writes anything down. And then they start doing stuff. And guys like, I didn't expect for you to go this way. And Todd is the one who mends the fences and so he keeps that's, the peace. yeah he keeps the peace he keeps the peace he's like a mediator so there's todd five joes keeps... and one todd yeah it's incredible <laughs> it's incredible it's i write things down though people just don't read them because they're so long and it's and it just feels like nonsense and so no, it people is nonsense. Tune out. it doesn't feel like nonsense it is nonsense Joe. it's absolutely it's it's I have a question. Dave, did you ever did you ever read my uh BMX Christmas movie? Probably not. <laughs> oh, you sent that to me. You told me to watch it on, on YouTube, right? I have yeah, not. either watch I'm it or waiting read. for okay. the right moment, Joe, but continue. Yeah. I'm waiting for the right moment. As he's <laughs> slowly dying in the potato <laughs> dome. He's waiting for the right moment. <laughs> I'm on my stick bed. It's like Oh, wait, wait, before, before I go. No, no, no. Yeah, I oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Montana, yeah. you have to be very theatrical if you're going to play my part. Ray, you were going to yeah. say something, though. <laughs> I was going to say, how, how many guesses do you think it will take to to, fit, to to get Jerry's cat to name his cat? How many? <laughs> like, oh, no. I think Joe would probably oh, win. Wait, let's you, the cat. You'd never guess. Uh, you never guess. Can you give us the first letter of the name? Uh, it's F. Frank. It's Gerald. Fudge. Foster. It's, it's, I think it's a movie character as far as a... Forrest. Uh, Fredo. Uh, what'd you say? Fredo. Fredo. Oh, that's so close. Frackle. It's like one letter off. Fredo. Frodo. Lord, Lord of the Rings something? Frodo. 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 That Romo. didn't take long. We got quite that long. Or... And everybody jumps on. I, I always even... told you, man, Frodo's good for something. Robo. Yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. Gosh. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Here, okay, let's get too. here. Here's that painting I was talking about real quick. There you go. Yep. That's great. And then, yeah, he signed the back. That's and great. And it's on black skate light. That's oh, awesome. Yeah, that's right. on yeah, I have a one that's on skate light also. I got a bunch of stuff sitting in here. Wow. There's Bob Haro. Showed us all the stuff he said he got rid of. I got rid of everything. Well, no, this stuff I Look like. This. this stuff I'm is actually. Kidding. I'm kidding. This is actually stuff that I, you know, I have in my closet that. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. That's bad awesome. again. Yeah. It's... Boy, Jerry probably paid big money for the watch and the tape, I bet. Oh, yeah. Do you know what this oh. is, Jerry? Yeah. Show me weird shit like that. Show me something just fucked. You don't want to... So, Ray, do you know the... St tell wow. the story behind this. I really can't tell that story for the 80th time. I, got I know. Old... God, we told it so many times already, Joe. Okay. Can we just oh get God. the brief... I will, I will... Davey, I have a video that tells this story, and I will send it to your Instagram. Right. Well, guess what? I will actually watch it because I am the new upgraded Dave, where uh, I'm the dorky Dave, where dorky okay. Dave watches and reads everything. The short, the short <laughs> version is Matt did a 900 in Ohio, in, in Ohio, in, in Canada. <laughs> his watch fell off his wrist. Some kid gave it back to him. I traded it for a watch. And I've had it ever since. And then I gave the watch to Joe. While we were talking about it, I was like, wait a minute. I have the tape that was playing when he did the 900. So now we have the watch oh. and the tape. The music. The music tape. Yes. The music tape, yeah. Wow. 
because the tape the tape was one that I used for entering contests. Like, does that tape have my name on it, Joe? Yeah, it says Raybo. Yeah. No, it says Ray. What Bo. songs are on it? That's the. It's, the it's Joe, you Ray Bo. Ray Bo. Do you have a nineteen over X? Nineteen over no. expert. You don't have a tape player? That'd be great to hear what's on there. Let me see if I can find one from. Yeah, that's gonna be really and, hard. And Montana, there's a videotape of the 900, and you see the watch fall to the ground. You can see it. it we watched it yeah. on the show, didn't we? Rick? And the fact that a kid picked it up and gave it to him was crazy. Uh, yeah. that would the be guy awesome. that fell in the audience and twisted his ankle or whatever. That's all I can. No, remember. that that was that was the first flare. Oh, that, that was the first was flare. Kevin Martin okay. who jumped up and bent his knees and went straight down on his <laughs> knees. <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, that's amazing. Thanks. I love stories like like that stuff. Is I, I I think the way we fix stories would have to be uh, large and Dennis the elephant have to get together and people just have to ask them questions about a person and then that'll spark the conversation. Oh yeah, it, you could go days with just one person and uh, a moment and you can be like oh this but that's the, that's what i wanted to do for a podcast is i want to pick your guys's brain and uh native americans pass on passages by telling stories when they're passed from people that were there before it's easier to do an interview and ask you stuff about other people than it is specifically about you because you're going to mm -hmm. have your own nuances about that person that's why I, we need you and him because you're both the BMX dorks that remember everything to give your stories. And I just don't think BMX thinks about that stuff because you are talking about. Uh, I was talking to Robbie Morales and uh, Zach from Kink, and I was like, look, dude, in 10 years, you guys are going to be 63. Do you guys still want to be bike owners? What are you guys going to do? And Robbie goes, fuck, I don't even think five years ahead. So, you know, when you were talking about mortality, we're at that. Like, you know, there's instead of suicide and bad car accidents and things, now we're going to run into natural mm -hmm. deaths and, and things like that. So I think some way, somehow, whoever has the biggest voice in BMX needs to get you two together or do something. Yeah, this is know. the craziest thing. You're Ricky, you're 100% right. I think what and BMX we, is missing is a podcast where guys tell stories. And we could call it Factor Freestylers. <laughs> you passed the you, test, Montana, Ricky. Uh, I'm having an Eddie Fiola moment sure. right it's now. Any fuel I'm having an Eddie Fiola moment. <laughs> what, is, what is that? Was that like a, a somber so moment? We're, so good? we're at the, we're, we're having breakfast at the Hall of Fame <laughs> and Eddie sits down at, the, at a booth with his business partners and then he, he comes up to us and he goes, guys, I got an idea. I got an idea. And he pitches us the exact idea for Factor Freestyle. And I just look at Ray and I go, did Eddie just pitch us our show? And Ray goes, yep. And then <laughs> I was like, we're going to sell the show to Eddie Fiola. And yeah. that's what we did. And then Eddie unfriended maybe. me on Facebook. I don't uh, understand. <laughs> well, Joe, but Joe, maybe that should be our that should be our goal is to get people on and then get them so in just involved and in, into the show that they basically are become just the show. They, they want it. They become right. the show. And then they say, hey, I have this great idea. I'm going to do this podcast. And hey, it's going to be about hey, people Ray, telling stories. Ray, Dave just pitched me the strategy for the show. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See? It happens you to see all of go. Dave is back. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. Dave's back. I'm sure, I'm yeah, sure Stoney's sure. done it. Stoney, you I did it last week. Stoney did last week. <laughs> <laughs> last week. Did Stoney pitch the show last week? Yeah, he I, did. I pitched it to you, Ray, and then you you ripped me a new one. In no, the what, what, you, way. what? What did I? What, wait, what did you say? What What was he saying? He Stoney basically pitched the show, and then you go, <laughs> Joe. Did Stoney just pitch the show to us? And then he like remembered it, but you did the same thing when you were like, when I was telling you the storyline for the Jeep ad, you were like, Joe, Joe, it's like the field of dreams. Why didn't you think of this? <laughs> oh man. It's so funny. Anyway, 
Um, oh, hey, you guys mentioned Dennis McCoy a bit ago. Yep. Um, I got kind of a, an interesting story. Like we're at the 2018 X Games and, uh, you know, you know, it was back in the day, you used to make signs for people. I was oh, out in my yeah. car before the before the X Games. I made this sign right here. No way. <laughs> That's yeah. the real sign. Oh, yeah. Did, did you see it? Uh, um, then before the contest, Dennis comes out and he actually, you know, came up to us and was he was talking about that Lasur contest. And he, he's like, God, that weekend they put me somewhere I couldn't go. And, and he, so he's talking. And the contest was actually starting. <laughs> so he's like, I got to go. And that was that time he did that 900. And, uh, I mean, this, 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 I just made this. And the ESPN was all over this. Did you see that episode? We're going to get that footage. Yeah. Look, I think it's 2018X. Uh, yeah. God, the guys, you know, I was like, oh, we love that when people make signs. And I'm like, yeah, nobody does that anymore, you know. And, yeah, I still got it just sitting here in the room. It wasn't the okay, garbage Joe, at one. Joe, here's an idea for the bootleg. That's, that's awesome. Signs, okay. signs and entrance curtains. <laughs> and basically get the bootleg team to say, give signs out to audience, to the spectators that say, yeah. we want the real horror show. We want the real. <laughs> All the signs are, we want the real show. Yeah, yeah we want the real guys. What's going to take for the real guys? Like, these guys are great, but we want the original or something. Oh, like, wait a second. You're right. We need it. the crowd. We need the crowd to demand the OG team. Exactly. And finally, then Ricky has to deliver. I mean, Montana Ricky has to deliver because uh, there's been just this uproar of fans that say, this, this is great, but we want the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. So what happens getting... after that, though? Like, then, once yeah, they then, start demanding the real deal, then... We then... Actually, you... then we actually try to book... I, I try to convince the team to do a show at the at the end of the summer. So Ricky, I'm I'm sorry, Davy. So Davy, we have to book a bunch of bike show bike shop shows and they can be small and impromptu at the beginning, but we need then to have the signs with the people with the audience demanding the real deal. I could definitely get no bullshit. I can definitely, I know I could get one for sure. You know, like, if you went through and named all the Flatland dudes, and I'm only saying Flatland dudes because, I, you know, I, we're all uh, not racist, but bikesist, where, you know, vert racist. rider, racer, whatever, you know, the bikeisms, right? <laughs> but it seems like the people that think the most and are most in their brain are flatlanders or dorks like myself, large Ray, you know, uh, Steve Crandall. I could just go through them. Ice money. There's all these dudes that are on the fucking side. Say my name with ice money. You <laughs> yeah. Fucking, fuck you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say fucking it. Ice because, money. I'm going to say it. And Joe, tell him I was goddamn ninth of, for rider of the year, 1990 fucking oh, yeah. ice money. You fucking wrong with you. I'm wrong with you. I'm talking I, about characters. I beat you're, Gary Pollock. You're the original <laughs> character. You're the guy. What are you talking about? You're the I original character. You're the, you're the jester me. to be a man. What the fuck are you talking about? You're the, you're the man. I, my helmet is in the goddamn... <laughs> Yeah, Hall of Fame. That, has, that doesn't you matter how me? good you are. <laughs> it's what fuck. you do. <laughs> You're you're at the AFA contest, <laughs> rat battling people, and Dennis McCoy and just one. looking at you, having no clue what's going on. And one. At and that one. moment, yes. Dennis McCoy was wishing he was me when he saw me take the microphone, man. He was such a midget. He was up to your knees. It ain't hard <laughs> to beat a person at that small compared to you. But what I'm saying though <laughs> is your voice matters because you're on the sidelines. Not like yes, oh cool, I get to hear. You know, all of these Bob Haro and Dave White and Craig Kemp. I don't want to hear. I, everyone hears their stories. I want the guys on the sidelines. I want you. Who's the dude that runs all the shows that wears the tie? I want to hear his stories, too. Who's that guy? Brian Skura. Oh, Brian Skura. Yeah, let me hear his stories. I just like guys that are on the sidelines that are a part of it that are everywhere. Ooh, shit. I like that. 
I found that on the floor right now while I'm sitting. I'm looking Yo, it was an, on, on the it floor like it, in my garage. It probably fell off my of helmet. It, it probably fell off my helmet when I was moving it around. Oh, wait a second. <clears throat> that looks like it's in nice. Ricky's beard. I mean, in Davey's beard. Oh, my goodness. Look. Uh, buy it. Stoney has a hammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shit. He does. How can uh, I restore this? It's not sticky. I gotta clean it and restick it somehow. The, there's the church they man? have yeah, they have forensic uh sticker fixers. You know, like those body wear and old... bodyguards by RL. There you go. Ask yes. RL. So it's a For... It's a logo. A with, I just realized it's pubic hair all around it. Sorry, Dave. I know we Whoa. don't like talking about it. I'm out. Whoa. I'm out, guys. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Dave quits again. He quit again. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, check this. Another thing found. Uh, I got stuff laying all the. See, I got, I got stuff like this. Here's Scotty Cranmer. Yeah. That was another. You know, when you go hey. to the X Games, you got to be prepared. Yeah. Dave, uh, are you, who, who are you talking to right now? I'm back. Who are you texting? I'm with? back now. But no, who are you I, texting I a, with? I have a little homework for, for, for Montana Ricky. I'm, I'm not texting <clears> anybody. <throat> I'm doing my, my due diligence. So mm -hmm. we talked about four tricks. Uh, yeah, I have to ask tricks. you: Is 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 go, Do you want to set your bike up for Gumby to to do this, Montana? Because is it that, possible? I, mean, I know this is going to be weird. It ain't possible to do a brakeless, right? I have to have back, front, and back brakes. Plus, I have to have a Tech seventy seven push button. Nope, no. You could do it. Uh, you could do it with the free wheel. But this is why I'm, this I'm this is why I'm bringing it up. I'm glad you asked. The only requirement is you are going to have to probably turn your seat posts around backwards and push your seat get a rail seat and push it all the way forward so that your seat hits your handlebar okay i got a railed seat and seat post that robbie just sent me yeah okay and and so that's going to be on a frame that's pretty like if you how long is your frame uh i have a hearsay i'm trying to think oh. of things i have a hearsay oh. 19 inch probably or 19 and a half yeah, 19 and a half. But okay, that would work. Okay. Okay, that would be fine. And then what's Heresy your crank is the what's... best brand ever. Sorry. Yes. What's your yeah, length cool. of crank arm? My length of crank arm on there, I think, is 165. Ooh. Mm, okay, so that's what it. I was just... So this this trick that Joe thinks I've been working... You know, the Gumby was something that I was doing to get back at uh, Dean Palacio, Dean Palacio because he did the handstand before I did it and blah, 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 all that but it, it's actually right before the contest and um, it was 1985 San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium and what I just figured out don't forget to wave joke, at your mom don't forget to wave at your mom when you do it exactly you got to wave at your mom yep okay when uh when Joe said that we're going to do this show I thought I better do my due diligence do a little homework I want to know what degree, what angle your bike needs to be in order to do a proper Gumby. It's actually 85 degrees is the angle. So that's what I was just doing. I put put this on my phone and I see that it's the 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 lean on the bike is at 85. So just take oh, your phone, put it on level. <clears throat> you, you're not going to get that. White mags. And you can't you can't get that on 165. These are these are 175. I might they might hey. be 170s. I, I I'm trying to think. I don't know if it's a 165 or a 170 because I I didn't have Flatland uh parts for it. I just used the street stuff from my last sponsor that I had. Um okay. We're going to have right. to Dave, some shit Dave out. would it would it be considered resi if uh rather than putting on 185 cranks if he took a couple of 2x4s and duct taped them to the pedal? Would it be uh, Resi? What actually, did you say? That's I such said, a good question. Can I tell you a story that, that I actually had to do that? So when, when they did the first reunion at Woodward, the old school reunion, uh, Steve Swoop was run, running it. And they, they basically they had the bar. It was that Saturday night. And we had 
whatever pizza and everyone's drinking and you know mm-hmm. nobody's dancing because it's just a bunch of guys right so i decided to go get my bike and start riding and i couldn't do a gumby on the hoffman bike because i hadn't done a gumby in years so i took somebody i took uh cole's scooter and i laid it on the ground and i put my bike on cole's scooter to keep the that 85 degree yeah. angle so yeah. i would say i did it so why can't davy do it no absolutely i think Perfect. you can do that just hey. tape tape a block on yeah I think you, you would be. Once we get this all set up, I think I can't. I can't wait for your pitch to Cole. To let's ask to Ray play the, role of the four player. tricks that he thinks because Ray knows like Ray knows. Ray yeah yeah. <clears throat> Ray, what are the tricks? What are what tricks? So Davey has to learn four of Dave Norrie's tricks to be kind of the the, the signature oh, what are the four writer. tricks yeah hold on one second Elliot if you let them out you gotta wipe their feet can you do that yeah we got a lot of dogs here at the house yeah. wipe their feet and, and, well we gotta wipe their feet or they you gotta they may jump on the bed and then you gotta that's a mess oh, so so oh. Brent Tricky's gotta do four tricks Yep. Yeah. When you look up who Brand Tricky is, then you'll get a giggle. Does anybody know who Brand Tricky is? No. Brand Tricky. If none of you fucks know who Brand Tricky is, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. I'm ashamed. I mean, ashamed of yourselves if you don't know who Brand Tricky is. Nope. Oh my goodness. <laughs> spell it. Why spell it? I just told you who it is. Brand Tricky. I don't know. How do you Branch spell branch? Ricky? Branch Ricky. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it. Branch Ricky. Oh, my God. But anyway. He's the, he's the baseball player, right? He's the guy that signed Jackie Robinson. Yeah, he signed Jackie Robinson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll tell you. You kids. You're a kids little bit these stuck. days. Kids uh-huh. these days. Yeah, well, you, de- um, you definitely went to some other dumb sport that no one cares about. If you would have stuck with BMX, we would have known. Fucking start with me, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You guys are going to be battling before the show's ending. Hey, look, I found I found a bicycle motocross three. Talk about oh random shit. I just found a 1974 number three for a number plate on my garage floor with the hammer oh sticker. Talk about I got rid of everything. So anyway, if he was going to do four tricks, he'd have to do the Naval Destroyer. He'd have to do the Gumby. Um, oh, wait, what do you call your naval destroyer? The Palacio stand? Yeah, but whatever. Yeah, we Palacio stand. Oh, it's so funny. What? Dave Norrie's stunt double has to do the Palacio stand. Is that the one stand? where he stands <laughs> one footed on the fucking front wheel upside no, down? It's a, no, it's a Dave Norrie handstand. Here we go. Look. Yeah. And he just bangs it out right there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. But, but Dean Palacio yeah. did it. Yeah, eight minutes before. Eight minutes before in the contest because he went before Dave. So those yeah. are the two the main ones. <laughs> then I would just go for. Oh, you know what? I whenever I think of Dave, I think of a Vanderroll. So you got to okay, do a Vanderroll. Yeah. Okay, Vanderroll. Oh, okay, and then and then you pick the next one. Well, I think two more. Let's do five. I think sliders definitely because I do so many sliders. Yeah. You do lots sliders. of Tennessee twists. Yeah, mm. where you sit on the bars and go back and forth, you know. Oh yeah, Eddie's got to grow the hair that you had back in 1983. Oh. He needs to grow that oh hair. Oh my out. gosh, that would be so I, nice. Dude, that hair feathers. was so sexy too. Yeah, Charlie's angel oh, yeah. hair he had. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, do you How have you a whole bunch of swat suits that you can make you know? a swat uniform? Do I have what? A whole bunch of swatches where you can make a swatch bondage uniform. No, I don't. But that would be amazing if I that, if I that. had his old Dino GT Skyway fucking shirt he had back in 1981 or whatever the hell it was. Oh right, can I tell you a story about that? So yes, when please. I went to the, that's why we're here. I went to that when I went to that contest. I basically had a penalty. The guy right now. And I had like Levi's. That's all I. And everyone was wearing leathers. And like, I, I don't want to go out there. So Tony Murray gave me some horror leathers. They're, um, 
they were his old leathers and they were like three sizes too big for me. I mean, literally they were like 32s and I was like a 26. I mean, it, it was ridiculous, but I wore them anyways, cause that's what they're doing. And then someone else gave me a, that exact shirt. You, you nailed it. It was a t-shirt, but it just had a GT and a Skyway logo at the top of it. And the Skyway was, was on the right. The dyno was in the middle at the top. Yeah. Was it dyno or was it GT? I no, it was, it was Dino. GT. GT was at the bottom and in the top right corner. Oh, right. Oh, you're with. right. Yeah, dang. This guy's done his own work. That's <laughs> crazy. That's crazy you know that. Uh, well, I, I took a shower this morning. Don't get offended. I was naked in the shower. <laughs> and I watched a lot of your videos to get prepared for whatever you were going to tell me I need to do. The shitty part is, is I wish I looked like you. I would be a better version of a younger large Ray because I'm loud, annoying, I say whatever's on my mind. I'm also a BMX dork. But but that's why that's why this role is perfect because it gets you out of your comfort zone and you're gonna have to like, I mean, the demeanor that I carry in a show <laughs> is not anything about being loud and obnoxious. Like that's you can't so you can't do that. That's just if you're gonna be a proper bootleg Dave Nori, you can't do that. You have to like sign the kid and then ask him if he needs his brakes fixed and fix his brakes like that's the stuff that I, once i got back on social media that's what blew me away the most montana is that all these kids were like oh we met you at such and such horror show and you took all the time and i my brakes weren't working and you like told me how to like clean my brake shoes and adjust them and whatever like that's the stuff that i've always done so that's the mode that you have to start to train yourself for oh well that's the hard work the tricks will I, be easy yeah, uh, well, I, I I think kids of the future and so are old dudes. And the old dudes, uh, what I mean by that, are the guys that sat behind the deck and watched us ride or wanted to be a part of it so bad that they never left. Those are the guys that we owe the, you know, the concrete and the foundation to, where I love those guys. So I go over and beyond. Usually what I try to find is, you know that one guy that knows everything about everything? He knows what the geo was, what this was made of or whatever. And he's usually a dork wear with pink hair or whatever not. He's right. the guy that I love the most because he buys everything. He supports everything. And without him, we don't have BMX because we need people that have that heart and that soul. So I go out of my uh, way to find those dorks. That's my favorite uh, part of BMX. Uh, I got it. I got it. You're looking for the guy who has a very compelling reason why he knows everything about BMX. Yes. Uh, he's Scott I know Powell, a guy who knows but everything about BMX. You mad. <laughs> That's the Ricky. only way I could describe it. <laughs> D Davey uh, might be the Indiana Jones of BMX. We need one. I think we have one. I, I I literally uh, yes, Dave. This is a perfect thing, but I, I I literally probably would be a better stunt double for Large Ray. But this works. it ain't that hard. You just got to be able to sit down and talk to people, and and have an occasional outburst. Now, my outburst <laughs> to, to, to learn you to learn you on on the character of Large Ray. Like when I started yelling about the ice money thing, you got to be able to do that. I did that. I did that for Joe. Like I did. Sometimes I'll ruin everything just to get the giggle from one person. So that's the one thing. Sometimes like you can ruin a whole person, you can ruin a whole crowd's night if you just get one person to laugh. That's the way I've done it. I don't know if I invented that or if it's a weird <laughs> stuff that I have, but I will sacrifice a whole event to get one person to laugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? If one person <laughs> will enjoy it, I'm in. So every story I've ever heard about you has always been i could stomach him but he would piss me the fuck off all the time every time no, I ask not about all. you there's so no, you know what i had. meet people i meet no, people all the, the time and they're like oh i thought i thought you were going to be a real asshole which i sort of am but they're always like oh i, I thought you were going to be a real asshole but you're actually like pretty nice like <laughs> i had i had people come here and buy shit years ago and they were like when they first got here, they were like, I was like, are these guys going to rob me? Like, what's going on? And then by the time they left, we were like singing Christmas carols together. Yes, but that's, they're that's like, large dude, they're like, we thought you were, 
We heard you were like the biggest asshole in the world, and now you're like one of the funniest, nicest dudes. And it's just you gotta just you just gotta accept it, man. Like I'm right. just, I, well, just... Ray is different than Large Ray. Large Ray is your character. That's your your extension of yourself, which is the same thing as being Moss. <laughs> that's why. That's why when I did a podcast last year, the whole BMX got mad at me, and I got uh, I got canceled my first podcast. So that's okay. Okay. That's Joe's goal in life is to get canceled the first podcast. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm saying though is I've always modeled myself after you, the Gons, even though the Gons had antics and stuff and did his crazy stuff, he still was a character. Lusciously, I don't like getting naked wearing a man thong. That's just weird. Uh, you know, Ice Money is just like a character. I just those guys are what made BMX for me. Cause I was like, all right, I can't ride but I could definitely act stupid. So nothing that, not you're stupid. It's just, you made me giggle. Every time I've watched the AFA thing, you're in the background doing something. So. All right, I, let, I me definitely... let me tell you, I, I got to tell you this, the, the, the moment that I fell in love with Ray. Oh, oh I got to leave. This is getting uncomfortable. No, 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 no. It's, oh, so good. it's so good, it's so good, it's so good, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Left like dude. four <laughs> times. I want to say, I want to say it was Dorkin three and He's on the ramp, and Gary oh. is riding, like, airing over him. And yeah, he goes, we're talking about Chris Day. He goes, we found that we got this footage. You know, Chris Day is a real tough, you know, metal yeah. sort of guy. But he met Dennis McCoy, and, well, we'll just we'll just let you. We reenacted we'll you, it a little bit. And it, yes, and... I I laughed so hard at watching Ray zoom in on those two guys. Like <laughs> Joe Johnson is blasting. Is a like, whatever I've seen that already, and yeah. he just goes right in. I knew, I knew that whatever and Joe Dennis was going to like... do, whatever Joe's doing is not going to be as good <laughs> as watching Rick Malaterno <laughs> sing while. Chris Day was mimicking him, being like, check me out. I can do it too, you know? Rick Rick it was in the great. background. DMC had his helmet on, and he's doing this thing. And then Chris he, – he, and Dennis just looks over, and he goes – and then Chris Day starts doing this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's the – I haven't seen it in a just, long time. We gotta, you gotta pull that up somehow. Um, I will get that. Don't worry. Yeah. You see Dave Norris over there ahead. doing the slider right now? Yeah, he yeah, is. we got. We got Flatland going on over there, yeah, man. Yeah, Dave's doing Flatland. Where is that? Dude, when you, when you're, when it's in the potato, the potato dome. Jerry, that's I can't believe you were one of his first students at the potato dome. No, that's way awesome. Way better than your Wilkerson experience. Hey, oh why don't God. we send Jerry out to the potato dome? <laughs> yeah. For a weekend at Nori's. Hey, can we get? Yeah. yeah, can we get a GoFundMe page going so we can get oh. Jerry to the potato dome? Yeah, oh, oh, don't don't wave it off. You'll do it. You'll That's you'll get there. You'll do it. Idea. You'll you do know it. how tall I am. I, I try to ride a flatland bike now, and it looks like a little sixteen-inch bike on me. Man, Dude. it's unbelievable. Dave's how got every you? size bike you need. Yeah, and that, look at that. And that jolly green giant couch that uh, where who's who dropped That's that where off you the can curb? Sleep. Look at that thing. That thing is huge. <laughs> wow, I can fit awesome. on that thing. Is that Dave's Gosh. garage or what? Where is that? that? The Did Potato he... Dome. Oh yeah, Doesn't that's what I'm talking watch about. This show or know anything about anything? For Christ's sake, <laughs> it's Whoa, the Potato Dome. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a 24 DMT. There you oh, go. Gosh. There you Jerry go. will be there Jerry, next. You've got it. Book yeah, you Jerry like for it. next Friday. Yeah, he lands at seven o'clock. He likes Taco Bell, warm <laughs> milk, and naps. It's gotta that's be the right. I'll, I'll be in o I'll be in Oklahoma. Oh, I'll that's right. Ron, a key? Ron being mad. Ron being mad that you liked cheap cheap burritos. I couldn't He's afford so to eat. I couldn't afford yeah. to eat when he wanted to go, and he was he was very angry that I had to go to like a Taco Bell because you know. And he's the one who is employing you. That's what was so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about paying me something here? <laughs> so, then, yeah, that, that's kind of, I never thought about it that way. I'm supposed to be making a living off you, and I can't and afford just, to go out to eat. And that, <laughs> that whole ordeal, neither one of you got paid. 
You 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 never paid him a part of the four hundred, and he never paid you your salary. Yeah. So you you lost a week of your life. He yeah, my whole Ron life was... owes you one week. <laughs> my whole life was packed in that car of mine too. Yeah. Hey, stacked wh- up to wh- the Dave. Why don't why don't you invite Jerry and Ron to stay oh, in no, the Potato no. Dome for a week? Yeah. Oh no, my no. God. <laughs> Could you imagine that? If yes, we we're going got to. to spend the weekend together. And oh, you know what? Gosh. Joe and I will buy Joe, all the fancy gosh. burritos you can eat. Yeah, and, and you can just have it <laughs> catered with the, all the different burrito shops around. Oh, yeah. we'll have oh, like gosh. I might have crocodile to one right and lamb burritos. Joe, oh. Ron comes through here all the time. He, he always, because he goes up to Seattle, and this is like a perfect stop that he stays over at least. Where are you night. located? I'm in Oregon, Southern Oregon. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Gosh. That's only a stone's throw away from Minnesota. Oh, yeah, for sure. See? I'll get there. You could be there by noon tomorrow. Yeah. I'll just drive. Just, Why not? Why not? He's done it before. Yeah. No, Dave, hey, Dave would be such out. a better host than, than Ron. Dave it's would be a, the greatest host ever. It's a tough one, though, yeah. As long as he rides and stuff. I mean, I want to Oh, yeah, he'll do that, it all. Yeah. He's a people person. I know. I, I, I mean, is there anything going on in Colorado this year? Any kind of flatland? Any? Nothing. He, that's why he's sitting on a couch in the potato yeah. room. There is nothing going on out there. God, I wanted to go to one of those flatland AFA things this year, or whoever's putting them on now. God, oh, no, no. Yeah, nobody knows. That's why Todd's not here. No, there is. Right? Just <clears throat> go to contest somewhere. There's yeah, I see the dates. There's rumbles. If you're in the know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those things are so awesome, those flatland events. Oh. As long yeah. as people don't fight, that's all I care about. That one well, dude, that one dude was drunk. Oh, yeah. That yeah. That one sucks. That, that there's, one, there's a big one in that'd Ohio. That'd be great that, having a fight where? in Ohio. Ohio. Oh, okay. Cleveland. Yeah. Flash Flash Assassins. And who else? Huffcam is happening. Joe, you can rattle them all off. Houston yeah, the uh, American oh, yeah. BMX Flatland League. Uh, there's going to be three stops. The first one is in Las Vegas in seven weeks. Oh, then it's going to be at. Then there's another okay. one in Houston that Art Thomason, who works June first. I know NASA. that date for some reason. Yeah, that's June first, and then Huff Jam is in Winston Salem, and then that wraps up the oh, okay. abfl series and then the flatline assassins battleground two is happening in beginning of august in cleveland wait when, what's um, happening to first what, what contest is that there's two things so arts contest is happening on june 1st and buckeye bike show is happening oh. on june 1st i see dave's oh. got to put in his request for his plane tickets for all this stuff yeah he's gonna fill up the that? paperwork gosh those flatland events are so great. I mean, to watch those is it, what they do. What you guys do is just unbelievable. It still amazes me to this day. You know what I mean? It's just incredible. I I yawned through them for some reason. Oh, are you nuts! Joe, I mean, Joe, did you see who, the guy? That... Who wants to watch Joe jump around on his back wheel while playing some <laughs> slow music, and then Todd comes out right after him doing the same thing, but <laughs> on the back wheel? Oh, it's ridiculous. Joe, did you see the guy oh, that did the double? It's a waste the double, of a weekend. I a double stubble, duck, <laughs> but a double stubble, but it was like a double it, body. It's burial. a body burial. Oh, yeah. It's a body burial. <clears throat> that yeah. was in the guy from Switzerland. Is that where he? Where, yeah. where is he from? He's yeah, somewhere over there. Not from Japan, like everybody else. Oh, now they're talking about real flatland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the real flatland. I, I'm telling you, I saw that little. I saw that little Asian girl in a skirt whoop all you guys, any of you guys. And <laughs> oh, you I see know. That girl? No, Just she kills it. Hair it she up. It. She about, yeah. She's about 11 years old. She's been riding for like 16 weeks, and she's better than any Flatlander we've ever weeks. seen. Not 16 yeah. weeks. Yeah. Like she's better years. than anyone we've ever seen. She's been riding And you like guys still years, piddle buddy. around in your garages, spinning on the front wheel. You should be ashamed of yourselves. I want to see a goddamn fire hydrant, a cherry picker. I want to see a goddamn pop tart bar, bar ride. Get oh, back to on. doing some shit instead of this spin around bullshit. God damn it. I want to pay a doom. Peg a doom is all I want to see. Yeah. That's, 
What is that guy's name? Perry Murver, whatever. Perry, Perry, Perry. Perry, 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 Perry oh, Murver. Perry. Oh, that guy was unbelievable. That's Bring back movie. Perry Mervar, dude. A real flatlander. That guy was just unbelievable. Sit on one peg and oh. spit in a circle. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, I like Paul Sika's writing, blindfolded. That was fun. Uh, oh, a word just... around the campfire is that Paul continues to ride. Yeah. Oh gosh! I can oh, sorry guys, I gotta go. Uh, something here, yeah. If no, really, great. Really I hope do. I can talk to you again. What, I, when he hangs up, we're all gonna try. What are these fucking balloons doing again? Remember that when <laughs> I did this, the balloon showed the fuck up. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but no, meet you, sir. I got so much more, man. But hey, yeah, I gotta go. I, yeah, Bye, it's not even worth explaining. But Dave, have a good time he... next weekend. When he hangs all up, right. we're gonna we're all gonna take turns saying what we think he's doing, why he had to leave. Okay. All right, see you, He'll Jerry. Never guess. Love, peace, and chicken we, grease. We, but yeah, man, it's great talking cat. to you guys again. And hopefully, I can talk to you again. Yeah, have a good time next weekend. Yeah. Meet Matt again. Yeah. Tell him hi. And okay, yeah, we'll, we'll talk to you guys later. All right. Peace out. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I gotta go here. Yeah. Here we go. This is the fucking longest goodbye ever. <laughs> no, there's gonna be ten minutes <laughs> why, of this. Why didn't I? Ten minutes of the there we go. All right, who the fuck was that? No, she's not <laughs> Was that that Jerry guy? Was that how'd Jerry get on? What happened? <laughs> I didn't realize who it was until he was talking for like twelve minutes. I knew it was Jerry. I know Jerry. I knew it was Jerry. Jerry you can Jerry's hear, my you man. Hear the voice. Jerry's the best. So what's your guess? What do you think he's gotta leave to do? Uh Let's see, four forty-three. Uh, yep. I want to see sure where what your he... mind goes. Let's just see where your mind goes. Oh, I just think he's probably. I don't know. I so far I've had to get up twice. Once it was to wipe the dog's paws, and the second time it was to cut pizzas that I've made earlier in the day. What kind of pizza? Kind of well, the one pizza had mozzarella sauce and pepperoni and the other one we didn't have any more mozzarella so it just had sauce pepperoni and goat cheese i love goat, goat cheese i make oh, pizzas oh, all the time, time. Made pizzas. you made a stromboli and two pizzas and i swear to god because of you i ate pizza for the next two weeks straight yeah it, that happens a lot if you like if you're just like sitting around whatever and you see somebody like making a pizza or cutting a pizza you're like god damn that looks good and it then did. You just want to eat pizza. So you didn't answer. What is he going to do? Uh, I, think I think he has to go to the pizza. grocery store. All right, I think he has to go to the grocery store, McGee, or he has to do got? something with his. He has a he has a kid that's probably uh, maybe a little younger than mine, so maybe like a ten year old kid or something. I'm guessing. So he's no, probably got to do some got to do some kind of with family a mind stuff. Like yours, you would have came up with something more elaborate. That was boring. Uh, see, you got you got a false sense of. You got a false sense of something about me. You've you've heard a couple stories that have all morphed into some other nonsense. He's probably and you think I'm some kind of hooligan. I'm I'm the put this way, I'm the most normal person on this call. You That's know? True. Like you know you really I mean? are. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to accept that. Maybe I want the character to come out. Either way. You want the character. Yeah. I want the character. Well, there was you just had the character. The character was what part when I was just what was I when, when I was just yellow. bitching about the flatland. And like when I was saying, these mind. guys, so that's the character. Me bitching about Flatland, me bitching about you calling me Ice Money. That's the character. Like, I don't mean that. I don't sit and dwell about that shit. I, I love know. doing I love, <laughs> I love acting like I just lost my shit. Uh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. Oh. Uh, well, you know, that's how you got to, that's how you got the job with Simon Cowell. I did the job, the job where they ridiculed me on uh, reality TV. I told oh. Angie that story, and yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. And she had to ask me to get it together and and speed it up. Speed it up. <laughs> My favorite part of that is when I called the girl a five head because her forehead was so big. <laughs> I'm like, five head. Not a five head. <laughs> And then, and then, when did? How did they cut the bolts off the side of your neck? And that's when, like, the people in the crew, I could see them like double over, like, 
like you got like laughing. They were like, "This guy is fucking killing it." <laughs> Fuck, I My... let them have it. If I could have the video of the first video. Of when I went out and, and ripped on him when I didn't have my mic on, oh, it'd be legendary. I, I'm sure. There's two parts about that problem. story that I love so much. Is the one when he says, "What about a five head?" And you're like, and you told the story about the guy from the construction. He's like, "Yeah, he said I got a big forehead." Yeah. <laughs> the and five the other head. part, and the other part was that um, you don't do take twos. It happens. Yeah, once, it was impossible to go do it again. Perfect. Yeah. Like think yeah. Of, think of something you ever did spontaneous and great, and then try and do it again. right after yeah. that. You it can't. doesn't happen. Yeah. It's, impo- it it's impossible. Work. No. Yeah, that's what I love so much about it is they were there like, to harvest. The 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 easiest way to explain that why why it's it's impossible to do it'd be like if you haven't seen somebody in 20 years and you see them for the first time mm-hmm. and the emotion and all the shit that's going through your head when you first see that person and then five minutes go by and then as you walk out of a room and come back in and they're there you're not going to redo it only dogs do that dogs don't fucking know <laughs> they always Man, you know, do dogs that. greet you the same every time but it'd be like try and get that emotion again, like rehype yourself up that you haven't seen a person, but you just saw them a minute ago. So second takes don't work. Second takes don't work. They do not work. That's pretty. That's pretty Hollywood of you. Yeah. There is no second take. Came through the curtain. You go what? And that was just the greatest part of it to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what. Yeah. What was your character name when you were a wrestler? Oh, Ray? Stoney, no, I told him you were a wrestler, Stoney. I was Diablo Jones. Diablo, where the hell did you come with that? You have the nicest smile. Sorry. I it's I, I was a bad guy. You were a bad guy? <laughs> I needed to be a bad guy. Oh, I would love to be a bad guy in wrestling. I would. The you only thing, I, the only thing I, wrestling, right? I wish is that I could have been Stoney's manager on the side of the road with a cane or the side the, the side of the uh, <laughs> ring and just yelling at kids while they're saying, Diablo blows. I'd be like, you blow too, little kid. I don't care that you're seven. Call him a seven-year-old oh. pencil neck geek. Oh. <laughs> What was Fred your uh, entry song? We are the world. We are the world. It was fantastic. It worked out. For, no, um, I used. It was a song by. It was a Nine Inch Nails remixed a P Diddy song. Uh, victory, victory. What's the biggest venue that you ever wrestled in? The most amount of people that saw you wrestle at once. Uh, about probably two thousand ish. Wow, that's good. That's like a that's like a horror show of the eighties. <laughs> yeah, good uh, good sign. A good horror, horror show. Yeah. But that was when I was young and healthy, and my body worked. Now I hang out on podcasts and. Uh, <laughs> are you dr- are girl. you in your car driving somewhere? Or are you just like locked in the car and sitting outside? No, I'm at the bike show. Um, my. Bike show. For- for whatever reason, my Bluetooth would not connect to Zoom, so I was like, I'll just go in the car and talk. What kind of bike show? Like, bicycle or motorcycle? The Midwest Old School BMX Show in Crown nice. Point, Indiana at the fairgrounds. First up here. Oh, you, should, you should go around and talk to people. I, w- I was trying, I was going to do that earlier, but it's too loud. You can't hear my phone, and since my Bluetooth isn't working, it it's a it'd just be like dead air. I mean, Bray you waste and your Tom? time talking to nitwits like us when there's a whole BMX event going on. Yeah, because I plan my week around talking to these nitwits. <laughs> I get more endorphins and laughing in this hour and a half or whatever. Like, I don't think uh, about Dave left. You said endorphins. What's that? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just being silly. Hormones. <laughs> Um, they saw he said something dirty and he was getting ready to leave again hey i was starting to go off and i'm like wait wait no that's not so bad no that's a good thing 
So but uh, it's my commitment to the show. That's why I'm here. Oh, okay. There Joe's you go. Doing. Well, somebody's Joe, committed. Joe's texting Angie because they have to plan their meal. No, no, oh, yeah. yeah. I love this it part. Is getting... Oh, we got a yawn. We got it a yawn. It is getting from... close. Yes. You're who, officially who, in the who, band. Who what happened? Brent Ricky did a big, big yawn. Mark it down. Put the note what time it is. He did a lion roar. We'll have to put the lion <laughs> roar to it. It's a big. He didn't even hold back. He let it loose. Nope. His hat rattled when he did it. I, I'm trying. I'm yeah. trying to be nice because I, if I can't interject anything, I just don't interject. So, so Ricky, we're having a contest, which is you got to capture a dude yawning on a podcast, and the name of the contest is "Ramp Up the Yawn." <laughs> well, time stamp it because he just busted one out. I got it. It's at four fifty. I didn't. I, I. I don't sleep at all. I, I sat up all night last night watching. Uh, props. Blue Lagoon. No, hell no. no. I'm a dork. I watched uh, props two, vol. Uh, let's see, props two, volume four, issue one, or something stupid. Then I watched. I, I just watched BMX all night long. Oh, there's a lot of other stuff on than that, dude. I mean, yeah, it's cool, well, but unlike you. Sleep. Unlike you, I'm still here, baby. Okay. Whoa. Oh. Did you ever did you ever see the main show? Did you ever see the 2003 <laughs> MTV main show with a girl did a backflip? You'd love King that. He gets so mad every time I talk about the main show. If he wants to watch BMX, that's some real BMX. It's 20 years ago, but that was some shit. We got to go longer. I, I like stuff that's in 30 years ago. I just like watching 86 up to like 92, 93. Hey, that one you had, that that reel you made about the emotion that you feel when you hear the intro of um, props. Yeah. I felt that, man. I felt that for sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, I did a, I did that trying to pick new kids for the props thing like if they were going to bring back props and i got a lot of owners and people hit me up and they're like why would you choose this and i'm like look there's a marketing scheme you have to do and you have to get the guys at the biggest uh sponsors to help sponsor things and kids don't think of things you know like i chose uh ryan williams because he could pretty much finance that whole thing because <laughs> if you're gonna i know that, a guy who can finance props too by the way yeah, but the road fools doing those road fools like the mega tour I was hearing was costing them over a hundred thousand dollars to do that thing. So wow. the amount of money that you need to do that. Either way, I just we need something to get BMX back where it needs to be, and Flatland needs to be involved somehow. Okay, I know a guy. His name is the Future, oh, yeah. and he has means that enable him to spend weeks away from home and yeah. and he's and he's looking for one of these stories but i swear to god i actually have to go oh my and gosh so, Ray, come, yeah come on if joe no, leaves joe. i leave but okay. wait joe why do you have to leave and don't lie don't lie <laughs> i hate <laughs> lying tell us the truth oh we're making dinner we're making dinner yeah yes okay I can smell it. What do you have it? Let's hear it real quick. Wait, what time is dinner at your place? Well, we didn't. Old people eat dinner today. early, dude. Yeah, it's five o'clock <laughs> on a Saturday. His cheeks were snowed in. Too. Look at how red dude. his cheeks got. He is <laughs> upset. He, he is done. Hey, look at yeah. him. Look at him. Joe, this uncomfortable is, a... is my favorite thing in the world. There's <laughs> only two things. I, the only thing I love more than making Joe laugh is making him uncomfortable. Look at how like, uncomfortable did you see how he, he is. Did you His hear what we started talking about? Right now, bro. What? When we started talking cooking? about, like, why bro, do you have to cooking? leave? He he turned, like, he did this sheepish look. little turn. Like, am I allowed oh, to say? He's gonna go look. He's gonna find out what it is. He's got to go bathe one of his cats. Let's just yeah. See. Oh, you don't even know the the chores. The list. We should do a show one week of the list of chores that Joe has. I thought he was talking to a baby before we came here. We talked for forty five minutes because me and him are both dorks, and I was like, oh, I don't mean to cuss in front of your kid he yeah. turns the camera he's spoon feeding a cat yeah yeah that's joe yeah that's joe's life what are we having for dinner joe <laughs> spoon feeding a cat 
I didn't even hear that because my don't worry about it. Out. Don't worry about it's anything. Okay. It's okay. What's for what dinner tonight, for dinner? Joe? Um, we have roasted cabbage uh, and That's tilapia. A fart fest. That's a fart fest tonight, dude. <laughs> that stinks. I was just cabbage. Gonna go you're gonna and we're gonna... and white bean stew. Oh, you guys, oh my God. listen, you, Kim, you're going to have to sleep out in the garage, Joe, because you guys are going to be <laughs> farting up a storm. No sexy time tonight, dude. You, you guys are going to be farting and watching Lawrence Welk tonight, dude. Bunch of fucking old people, dude. Bean soup and cabbage with some fish. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that does sound like it's going to do it. Well, Go through I love the McDonald's you guys. drive let me get on here. Uh, Dave, I'll DM you. So I can keep in touch with you. I follow you and stuff. Uh, yeah, Ricky. yeah. Ricky, it was nice meeting you. I'll see you again sometime soon. Dude, I, I really right. appreciate you and everything that you've done. And obviously, I'm busting chops, but I, yeah. you've done it's a lot. It's all good. You've it's all a, good. I appreciate it. And I give my kudos to you. Hey, oh. there's Kim. Hey, Kim. Hello, Kim. You can't hear. All right. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Wow. <laughs> uh, this is the Italian job. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Wait for it. How long to crack it? Four minutes and 43 seconds. Fuck!